Another important physiological consequence of the 2,3 BPG molecule has to do with a developing fetus. But before we discuss that, let's recall what we discussed about the 2,3 BPG molecule. So 2,3 BPG, or simply 2,3 biphosphoglycerate, is this biological molecule that acts as an allosteric effector of hemoglobin. So what it does is it binds onto the hemoglobin molecule at a special location that is not the same location that oxygen binds to and it stabilizes the T state of that hemoglobin and by stabilizing the T state it lowers the affinity of hemoglobin for oxygen so it basically shifts the entire curve the oxygen binding curve to the right side with respect to pure hemoglobin that does not contain the 2,3 BPG. Now, how do we say that 2,3 BPG binds onto hemoglobin? So what we said was at the center of the hemoglobin is this positively charged pocket, is this region of space that contains a positive charge or positive charges. And these positive charges come from six different amino acids which are found on the beta-1 and the beta-2 subunit. So let's take a look at the following diagram which we spoke about in the previous lecture. So this is our normal hemoglobin. And hemoglobin contains the beta-1 and the beta-2 uh, beta subunits as well as these two alpha subunits. Now, at the center of these individual subunits are the heme groups. And at the center of the actual hemoglobin molecule is this pocket of space. And in the pocket of space, we have three amino acids coming from the beta-1 subunit. We have histidine 141, lysine 82, and histidine 2. And we also have three amino acids coming from the beta-2, also the histidine-2, the lysine-82, and the histidine-143. And each one of these amino acids contains side chain groups which contain a positive charge. And so together, these six amino acids create a relatively large positive charge at the center of that hemoglobin. And this molecule, the 2,3-BPG, contains 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 negative charges. And that's exactly why this molecule is able to bind at the center pocket because there is a strong electric attraction between these negative charges and the positive charges found uh, along the following six amino acids. So this is the 2,3-BPG molecule and it binds via electrostatic uh, forces with these six amino acids. Now this is normal hemoglobin that is found in our bodies but when the fetus is developing inside the mother the gene that expresses the hemoglobin expresses a slightly different hemoglobin. So the fetal hemoglobin molecule also contains the alpha-1 and the alpha-2 subunits, but it does not contain beta-1 and beta-2. Instead, it contains a slightly different type of subunit we call gamma-1 and gamma-2. Now, what's the major difference between the beta and the gamma subunits? Well, as it turns out, in the gamma subunit, the gamma subunit does not have histidine 143. Instead of histidine 143, histidine is replaced with serine. And serine, as we know, does not have a positive charge. So serine is neutral. And what that means is, in the pocket of fetal hemoglobin, there is a smaller positive charge because these two histidines, histidine 143 on this subunit and histidine 143 on this subunit are replaced with serine. And so instead of having a positive sick charge, we essentially have a positive four charge, a smaller positive charge. Now, what is the physiological consequence of that? 
Well, because we have a smaller positive charge, the 2,3 BPG will not be able to bind as strongly to that, sec to that center pocket as it binds in the normal hemoglobin. And so what that means is the fetal hemoglobin will not bind the 2,3 B uh, BPG as strongly. And so because of that, the fetal hemoglobin will have a higher affinity for oxygen than the normal hemoglobin found inside the blood of the mother. And what that means is the fetal hemoglobin will be much more attracted to the oxygen and that's important because it needs to be able to effectively and efficiently take the oxygen from the mother's blood and deliver it into the blood system of that developing fetus. Now, if we examine the oxygen binding curve, we see that this green curve basically describes the oxygen binding curve for the fetal hemoglobin, while the blue curve describes the oxygen binding curve for the hemoglobin found in the mother's blood, the normal hemoglobin. And we see that our blue curve is shifted to the right with respect to the green curve. And that makes sense because what that means, the blue curve, the regular hemoglobin, has a slightly lower affinity than this green curve, than the fetal hemoglobin. So the fetal, uh, the fetal hemoglobin at the same partial pressure will be able to bind more oxygen than that mother's normal hemoglobin. And that's important because we have to have an effective method by which that fetus actually obtains the oxygen from the mother's blood. So this is one more important physiological consequence of this molecule 2,3-BPG.